What do former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair and many young adults have in common? Well, in October 2023, Tony Blair, once the youngest British Prime Minister in over a century, was actually rushed to the hospital with severe chest pain and palpitations. The diagnosis? Supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. He was then chemically converted with a drug called adenosine, literally shocked back into a normal rhythm using the medication. And then later he underwent a catheter ablation procedure to cure it. So what is SVT? And how is it different from atrial fibrillation or AFib, the most common arrhythmia in the world? Let's break this down. So SVT and AFib are both abnormal heart rhythms, but they affect very different groups of people. SVT often appears in younger populations, even teens and young adults, because the electrical circuit that causes it is actually there from birth. Atrial fibrillation, on the other hand, is an age-related disease. The older you get, the more AFib is likely to show up. It's actually tied to changes in the heart structure over time. Tony Blair's case, was a classic SVT presentation. He experienced a sudden onset of rapid, regular palpitations and required urgent treatment. SVT typically causes a heart rate that's very fast and rapid, but very regular, almost like you're running on a treadmill or sprinting, even if you're just sitting still. A fib, on the other hand, causes a heart rate that's very fast, but very irregular, which many people describe as chaotic or fluttery. Some people, it feels like a fish flip-flopping in the chest. Both can cause chest pressure, shortness of breath, and dizziness, but AFib tends to be more unpredictable. So here's a critical difference. AFib can cause strokes. Because the atria are fibrillating, going super fast, instead of contracting properly, blood can pool and form into clots. If a clot develops in the walls of the heart, breaks loose and travels to the brain, it can block off blood supply and cause a stroke. That's why many AFib patients need blood thinners. SVT or supraventricular tachycardia does not cause strokes. It doesn't create blood clots. So we treat SVT for symptoms of rapid heart rates, but not to prevent stroke or death. Another major difference is that SVT doesn't get worse over time, whereas AFib is a progressive disease. AFib can start out as early stage paroxysmal AFib, which is episodes coming and going, but it progresses over time slowly until eventually it becomes persistent or even long-standing persistent stage, and then eventually permanent where you're in it 100% of the time. Here's where it gets even more interesting. SVT ablation is very straightforward. It targets a small, well-defined circuit, and it's very easy to get rid of and highly curable. 95, 97% cure rate with one procedure. A typical SVT ablation usually takes one and a half to two hours and cure rates are literally 95 to 97%, one procedure. A fib ablation is a lot more complex. It involves multiple walls of the atria and often requires much longer procedures. The success rates depend on number one, the stage of your atrial fibrillation, meaning how long you've had it and how many walls are involved, how big is your forest fire. Remember, AFib is a progressive rhythm problem. So if it starts on one little wall, it's only waking up 10 or 15%. If it progresses to two out of the six walls, it's waking up 30, 40%. Three out of the six walls, 50, 60%. Four out of the six walls, 70, 80%. Five walls, 90%. And eventually all six walls, 100%. So at later stages, it takes more skill. That's why success rates for AFib ablation vary widely depending on the stage of your atrial fibrillation. How big is your forest fire? Easy is easy and hard is hard. 10% is easy to get rid of, 90% only a few of us can do. Number two, AFib ablation success rates depend on the skill of the electrophysiologist performing the procedure. If you have a later stage persistent or long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation stage, a basic one wall ablation just won't cut it. You need a comprehensive approach by someone experienced and who specializes in doing complex ablations. So let's summarize. Tony Blair had SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, a rhythm present from birth, circuit-wise, that's more common in younger adults, 
It's highly curable with a simple ablation and will not cause strokes. Atrial fibrillation is a different beast. It affects older individuals. It gets worse over time and it can cause strokes. Treatment often includes blood thinners, antiarrhythmic drugs to keep the AFib cells asleep, and or advanced ablation strategy. So, SVT equals symptoms only, no stroke risk, symptom treatment only, and a highly curable ablation success rate. AFib equals stroke risk, disease progression over time, and complex management. Whether or not you have an ablation or not for AFib, or what kinds of treatment, always depend on how much symptoms you're having, the more symptoms you have, the more aggressive treatment you're gonna want, the less symptoms you have, the less aggressive. Your age, if you're 80 or 90 years old, slowing it down with a drug or suppressing it, doing the less risky thing makes a lot more sense than doing an aggressive ablation. Your risk tolerance. If you're willing to accept more risk and try to get a better result with an ablation, great. If you're not, if you're more risk averse, then do medications. And then of course your long-term goals. If you're younger, you may want to get rid of this for a long period of time and do a more definitive treatment, even if you have to take some risk up front. If you're older, you might say, hey, we're just treating symptoms, just go from least risky to most risky. So in summary, if you're dealing with either one of these rhythms, the first step is understanding what you're up against. SVT may be the rhythm that rushed a young Tony Blair to the hospital, but it's also one of the few heart conditions we can actually cure. AFib, that requires strategy, skill, and sometimes persistence. But the earlier we treat it, the better. If you found this breakdown helpful, please like us, subscribe, and share this video. And if you want to learn more about how AFib progresses or how to pick the right ablation strategy, check out the next video on screen. Thanks for watching. And remember, knowledge is power when it comes to your heart. For fibrillation related, please feel free to go to my website, drscottlee.com, where you're gonna find more resources and also can follow me on social media.